Hey guys, still here. Welcome to Heliborn. In this video I'm going to be discussing how you can get started with this game and how you can quickly make your way from the tier 1 to the tier 4 helicopters. Now, By the time that you're watching this video it may have changed completely as the game is still heavily under development. Anyway, the moment that you load up the game it's likely going to look something like this. You have two squadrons. You have the USA Gen 1 and you have the Soviet Gen 1. The Soviet Gen 1 only starts out with two helicopters, that's the only two that you have with this first squadron. And the USA Gen 1 starts out with, I believe, three of them. Again, this could change. Now, what you need to know about these different types of helicopters is that you can quickly recognize them. The arrow pointing downward, the triangle shape, that's a scout. So you can see that each squadron has one scout. The boxes are transport helicopters. There is one further class of helicopter, and that's not in the early phases. That's the diamond shape, and this thing, once again, uh, mostly has a role as an attack helicopter. And I'm emphasizing mostly because these helicopters can all be used in different roles. You can all use them in uh, different capacities, because a scout doesn't mean that uh, it's unarmed. Similarly, one of these transport helicopters might be slow, it might be cumbersome, it might be able to transport troops, but it doesn't mean it's unarmed. These things come with rocket pods. Now, if you're not really too sure about your own flying skills, you can say, okay, I'm going to go into the hangar, I'm going to pick up one of these birds, and I'm just going to go into a training flight. Now, the training flight allows you to just move around. Very, very simple. Space bar lifts you up. Holding left shift puts you back down. It's that simple. With, um, and this is the same if you're actually in game, the G key switches you from helicopter to helicopter. So if I press G, I'm going back into the menu. In game, it's going to look slightly different. Back to the training flight. One thing that you need to be aware of when flying these helicopters is that uh, WASD moves you forwards and backwards. But it doesn't really do much for your speed. As you can tell, I am speeding up, but I'm not actually using pitch too much yet. My speed is currently 162, as you can see on the top left side of the screen. Now, I'm going to accelerate by climbing up and then putting the nose a little bit further down. Especially with later tier helicopters, um, you can do some sort of strafing run. That's the best way to compare it. Now keep in mind that this doesn't work if you're right close to the ground. Because if I'm getting too close to the ground, I will just crash. So make sure that whenever you're doing these sort of strafing runs, you're always making sure that you have enough elevation. These strafing runs, by the way, can save your life. They can be the difference between getting shot down by a bunch of anti-air or making it through. So make sure that you try and master this technique as quickly as possible. The way that I do it is just flying up to an objective, getting some altitude, and then putting your mouse or pulling your mouse towards you, putting the nose down. You can see my altitude is going down fast, but I just gained 60 kilometers per hour on airspeed. And especially at higher speeds, these things tend to get a little bit less agile. I'm currently two meters above ground level. So make sure that, especially if you're flying in canyons, you uh, try to predict the terrain by looking at your map. And let's see, do we have any targets here? I don't believe so. Let's just say I want to get up to altitude. Uh, let's say that there's a strafing target right there. I'm going to go down, 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 down. And now I can keep more or less my weapons on the target by just keeping the nose uh, locked on target. That's really what you need to know about the flying part. Now the weapons part has a couple of different options depending on the type of helicopter that you're using. Standard, you have guns. These are the ones that I'm currently using. The top left side of the screen shows you the amount of rounds that you have left. 1106 is what I currently have. The good news is that you can reload these things in the air. If I press R, you can see that a bar starts to charge and you simply reload your main gun. Again, it is not a simulator. The same thing cannot be said for your rocket pods. If I fire my rocket pods, there, we're now empty, and I now press R, nothing happens. Rocket pods and missiles need to be recharged at the base. 
And then you can see I have something else. That's this sign. That's the mortar observer feature. For this I recommend that you're hovering so you're not actually moving. And keep in mind that when you're flying and you're trying to hover you will always gain some altitude. And this can either put you uh, into an obstacle or it can force you to get shot down. So try and plan those maneuvers. Anyway, switching to mortars. Currently there, is a, no, there are no mortars available. The nice thing about the mortar observer feature is that um, it doesn't impact how you maneuver. So um, I'm not actually, by pointing this thing downwards, maneuvering my helicopter. I'm not actually getting any speed or going anywhere. So if you're just trying to look around, then you can do that very easily. Now you can also zoom in with this feature, and you do that by pressing F. This is the standard view, this is the zoomed in view. This will help you uh, precisely engage targets, and it works with the gun turrets as well. Keep in mind turrets, not the standard guns. What I have now are the standard guns, and I cannot zoom in with those. If you unlock newer helicopters, you get turrets, and the turrets are usually linked to uh, a zoom in feature. Now this is the scout helicopter, uh, nice and fast and agile, and not particularly invulnerable to uh, wires such as those. Let's switch to, for example, the H-21, which you could, s well, I suppose you could consider it one of the uh, grandfathers of the Chinook that you might be familiar with. This one has a different loadout. You can see that I have rocket pods, uh, and I have two machine guns, two M-19s, but I do not have a mortar observer feature. That is simply not something that this helicopter comes equipped with. What it does come equipped with is a troop transport bay. You can see them sitting down here in the back. Normally, you start out with a standard, com uh, well, a standard assortment of 18 seats, and that's fine for this one. You don't need to do anything about that. You don't need to change your loadout. And you change your loadout, by the way, in the squadron section. So we're going to say edit. And this is something, again, you don't have to do it, especially if you're going into the standard uh, PvE mode, so the co-op battles, you don't need to do this. Just make sure you um, have your standard soldiers. So that's 4 for the H-25A, 11 for the H-19, and that's all you need to really consider. Um, actually, I'm not sure I'm supposed to have any either of these birds. Um, what you start out with is the H-21, or sorry, the H-25, so you started with these three. The OH-13S, the H-25, and the H-19, so I need to adjust that in my squadron. Come to think of it, otherwise you might be looking at something a bit different. Anyway, um, if you would want to change your loadout for soldiers, you can. But this is something that I don't recommend you do right off the bat, because it is not that useful just yet. Especially at Tier 1 battles, um, there's not that much to shoot at with RPG troops. Um, in the current phase of the battle, or the current phase of the game, there are no enemy helicopters. Only in PvP will you see enemy helicopters. That's when the man pads become interesting. The mortar teams are the only ones I would consider bringing, because these can be deployed by um, your helicopter or a friendly. And then your mortar observer from the OH-13S can actually get some shots in. That's how these things work together. Now as you can see, this thing has several different loadouts, and as you gain research points, that's these star symbols up here, 67 research points is what I currently have, you can then unlock additional research or additional weapon loadouts. This one comes with 38 millimeter rockets, uh, that's why it has these large batteries on the sides. I could also say, well, that's nice, but I want a bigger caliber rocket. 127 millimeter rockets, but I only carry 12 of those. They're far, far more deadly, but again, if I fire all 12, they're just gone. Whereas if I have 132, I can potentially take down larger groups of units, but they deal less damage. Again, it is a trade-off. Then for defense, you have for tier 1 no defensive equipment, and if you want to, you can unlock some camos. Now some of these camos can be unlocked by just purchasing them through research points. Some of them you need to pay for in the Steam store. They're uh, a DLC version, basically. Alright, so that is the USA Squadron. Um, the Russian Squadron is really quite similar. Um, you start out with one scout helicopter and one troop transport helicopter. 
The troop transport is the KA-25. The, the scout helicopter is the KA-19. Now the one that I, or the way that I have it set up, uh, I have it a bit different. I have my KA-18, so that's the scout version. I have it equipped with two, or actually one mortar team. So this helicopter can deploy its own mortar team and then from afar engage targets. Again, you have the training flight, you have the play feature, and that's really all that you need to know about the buttons. Now, let's get into a battle. You can do that either through clicking battles. These are the battles that are already in progress or clicking single co-op and then start your own. Um, for this example, I'm going to start my own. I'm going to say create. Um, I want to have the USA squadron. So you click the US flag and you select a nation. I'm going to have two simultaneous objectives, difficulty medium. I'm going to co-op for four so anybody can join. Win conditions, 12 objectives need to be completed. Game mode regular. That's all that I'm going to set up. You can set a password if you want to make this a private lobby so only friends can join it. And by doing that, um, you exclude everybody who doesn't have the password, of course. So let's join the battle. And it's not, well, it's not technically join, it's start the battle, really. All right, here we are. The Vietnam Gulf of Tonkin. What you can see here is what we have and what they have. We are the red team, the enemy is the blue team. You start out at a resupply point, and from that resupply point you can pick any of these helicopters that you have selected in your squadron. So this is the standard USA Gen 1 squadron. The blue zones are controlled by the enemy, the red zones are controlled by us. And on the top right side of the screen you can more or less make out the objectives. Uh, objective, something enemy infantry in the marked area. It's going to say kill. I want to have that as my first objective. And especially scout helicopters are able to very quickly spot enemy infantry and take it out. So the OH-13S would be better. If I were to take the H-25A or the H-19, I would have far more rocket pods. But the problem is that the helicopter does not really have any spotting. So it would not be um, having anything to go on other than tracer fire coming up from the enemy soldiers. But I would rather not present my helicopter as a target just to make sure to find out where the enemy is. So that's not really a good helicopter. At least not if you're flying solo the way that I am now. If you have a buddy, then it can work perfectly. You can have one buddy, uh, one buddy playing a scout and you playing a transport helicopter for example. And that way you're able to have a spotter and a killer. And especially later on, when you're working with the gunships, so that's the, the diamond shape, you can very quickly put stuff down, so long as you have a spotter. Anyway, we're going to take off with the OH-13S. Again, not particularly heavily armed, not particularly durable. Uh, take note, by the way, I'm trying to immediately gain speed by tilting it forward. And as you're learning the game, try to quickly find out how you can use the terrain to your advantage. Especially in the early battles, you do not have uh, flare dispensers, so you don't have countermeasures. And this means that, especially against infrared guided AA, so man pads, you are very, very vulnerable. Be very careful there. I'm going to go for objective one. You can see I'm mostly using the terrain here. Climb rate on this helicopter is alright, but it still needs a bit of time. And there we go. We can really see some targets. I'm going to press B. This allows any teammates to also spot these targets. And every kill that you get by somebody else, or every kill that somebody else makes based on your spotting, you get XP for. And that's why I always recommend that you start out with a scouting helicopter especially in the early tiers, because it gets you so much XP so quickly. Now as you can see on the si right side of the screen, I am taking a lot of damage. I'm down to 30% of my hit points. Ooh, another RPG came in, and I just got shot down. Scout helicopters are quite powerful at scouting. They are not particularly durable. Now, I'm not going to be able to find the infantry, not with the H-25. So what I'm going to do is go after the enemy infantry group instead, or the enemy vehicle group, that we can see over there. I'm just not sure if I'm going to make it there in time. That is going to be problematic, because we have 50 seconds to get there. So I'm going to do my best, but this thing is no scout helicopter. 
And even if we get there in time, it's going to be very interesting to see if I can kill them in time. Again, I will not have these blue indicators for enemy targets, meaning that I'm just going to have to eyeball where the target is, where it's going to be, and how I can kill it. Fortunately, the targets that I'm going to be firing at are boats, uh, small patrol boats, very, very vulnerable to... Uh, oh, hang on. Nope, that's not the target. It's not inside the targeting zone. These boats are very vulnerable to both machine gun fire and rocket pods. There's the target. I have nine seconds to kill it. Ah, I cannot cut it on target. Come on. Oh, crap. You can see that this thing just does not turn in time. Got it. But a couple of seconds too late. You still get XP for it. As you can see, three vehicle, uh, three points for light vehicle destroyed, but the objective is a failure. Every time you fail an objective, depending on how the host has set up the game, the enemy team, so the blue team, gains a point. Otherwise, your team gains a point. Now, it looks like I found the other patrol craft, but I'm not going to go for that thing just yet. I want you to show, I want to show you how to capture stuff, because capturing allows you to win the game as well, and it gets you XP. Now, take note that it takes a while for these things to slow down. Uh, you're going to have to really try and level it. And descending just takes a long time. Now, in the meanwhile, I'm taking fire from the other side. So I'm going to send some rocket pods out that way. Try and get some kills here. Because I would rather not get shot at as I'm trying to land this helicopter filled with troops. Now I can see them, but just about, and they will not stay lit up like they are with the, uh, with the um, scout helo. Now, I don't think I'm going to survive this one. There we go, got shot down again. Incoming fire was just too high. This is why, especially early on with these early model helicopters, I recommend that you do not fly alone. If you do fly alone, you're going to have to work twice as hard spotting and engaging stuff all at the same time. Not recommended. We're going to take the H-19. It's a bit more agile than the H-25, or at least it feels that way. It's a bit smaller too. Uh, it's a bit faster, but I believe it is slightly less durable than the H-25. Anyway, we're making our way towards objective number 5. It's always handy to have your teammates know what you're doing, and the easiest way to do that is to just hold control and you know, get the cursor and then click on the zone that you're trying to target. And it's going to say down left side on the bottom. Stealth 17 has targeted point 5. Now my allies know what I'm doing. Talking of allies, I have an ally. I have an OH-13S. Who's going to help me? Uh, he's flying... Oh, shit, they just took it over. Those large blue diamonds, that is enemy AA. AA positions. And fortunately, the OH-13S took it out. So I'm going to say thanks for that, because he just saved my ass. And he's marking infantry targets for me as well. Of course, he can still engage the infantry himself, he just doesn't have to always have an eye on it. In the meanwhile, I'm going to put her down here. Make sure you have enough soldiers to capture to 100%. Two soldiers, well, depending on the zone, I believe, two soldiers equal uh, 50%. Immediately a new threat shows up. Lighten them up. Target killed off. He's engaging the infantry that was harassing me on the other side of the water there. And now we can make our way to the next objective. Now, I, sec I uh, secured the LZ. I then de destroyed a light vehicle and I defended the LZ, gaining me another 5 XP points. Or XP. XP points is a bit double, isn't it? Now, moving on to number 2. I'm going to say that's what I want to target. This doesn't really do anything for you stats-wise, it just allows you to uh, show your friendly what your plan is. And we immediately have AA. Our buddy got shot down, and I'm going to be next. I did take down uh, one or two AA positions, but that's about it. That's all I was able to do. I'm going to wait to see what he picks, because I'm going to try to match it. And if he picks... Yeah, he picked the UH-1B, so he picked the transport helo now. That means that I'm going to go in with a scout and scout for him. Again, you will not always have communication with your team about this, so try to get as much um, 
well, I suppose you could call it empathetic ability, seeing what the uh, other players are using and how you can add to that. Don't just all fly gunships, because it just wouldn't be very useful. Yes, it's nice to have the Apache and to just do massive amounts of damage, but there's no real amounts of damage to be done if you don't have somebody spotting for you. Now, it looks like he already took a large volume of fire. He's smoking heavily. Stay close to him. I think he wants to try and land at position 2. Or, no, he's probably going for the uh, units in the marked area. So he's going for these ones. Again, we're taking fire. There's a patrol boat down there. If you have something spotted, press B and it's going to stay visible. What I'm going to try and do now is race towards that point where he is heading. So I can mark the targets for him. Uh, though with boats, you don't really need to. And you can make it easier for him to target them. And also gets me XP. There we go. He took him out. That was just the one and we got the objective done. Now, there is another enemy group over on the right side. So we're going to head towards that one next. And you can see that by marking the target, that one, under my crusher, uh, it is still marked. Now I'm going to engage this other boat that's just basically getting in my way. And the other one is right around the corner. Gotcha. Didn't take a lot of return fire. Now it looks like my friendly is heading back to base. And in the meanwhile I'm using the canyons here for cover. Making sure I do not get shot down before I even reach my target. Uh, it's not going to work all the time. And the terrain to some extent, such as these trees, uh, you can basically fly through them. Which is weird, but it works. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that. should have flown around it and then engaged the boat from the side. Anyway, this is basically how the game works. Um, another interesting thing you need to know is that uh, whatever happens, you can always quit out of the battle. And you still get your XP. So I currently have 36 XP. I can quit out of the battle. You're going to get a loading screen. And you're back at your after action report where you get 36 XP. You can immediately spend that on whatever you like. This works cross trees. So um, it's not like the research is tied to one specific helicopter. It's not like it's tied to one specific country. You can use it for whatever you like. So if you really like flying US helicopters and you want to make your way down the Russian tech tree to get the MI-24, you can do that. Just make sure that you get XP uh, using your US helicopter wing, for example, and then you research whatever you like and you immediately start flying that. You don't have to fly all the previous models, which is something that is very, very nice about this game. It just saves you so much time, so much grind and so much patience, really. That most of us don't have and the best part you don't even have to have a premium account for it it is just uh, a free to play or well <laughs> free to play in the sense that you need to pay the initial 20 euros uh, 22 bucks or 15 pounds for it and then it's free to play there's no monthly subscription no ways to speed up your grinding last point if you want to make sure you get experience quickly I recommend a scout helicopter, especially if you're playing with your friends or if you're playing with randoms and you just spot for them. Make sure you mark the targets by flying over them or close to them and pressing B. And that is going to mark the targets. By doing that, every kill that gets made consecutively is going to be awarded, or at least you get awarded some of the points. And it really, really ramps up. Transport helos initially, not that powerful. And um, as you get later through the tech tree, these things tend to get really, really potent. At tier 2, you're going to start to see more dangerous adversaries. Also along the lines that you will want to have infrared countermeasures, flare decoy dispensers. These things you will need to use manually by pressing Q once you have them installed. It is not an automatic system. These things do recharge, so the good news is that you don't have to fly all the way back to your base in order to get these things resupplied. The only things that you need to go back to base for is resupplying things that you cannot resupply in the helo itself. This is uh, rocket pods, this is missiles, this is infantry, and um, that's all that you need to do at base. Well, aside from repairing, of course. 
So, that is your starter guide to Heliborn. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, be sure to check out this game if you haven't already. I really, really like it. I really have a lot of fun with it. And on my TeamSpeak, I have a couple of rooms where you can play with your friends. If you are, or if you're, even if you're solo and you just want to link up with people, you can do that right on the TeamSpeak. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful to you. If it was, please give it a like up. And um, otherwise, I'll see you soon for another video.